biggest fan, <laughs> Rachel McMillan from Canada. Yay! Hi, people. <laughs> I am a big, big fan of this book. I love it. So I am so excited to meet with her because she wants to marry my hero, Paul Emerson. I do. The historian of the British Museum. And you will all, well, you female readers will also want to marry Paul Thank Emerson. You. And uh, you male readers who should read this because it is not your gushy historical romance at all will find two awesome different women to, uh, to follow in the book. Yeah. So, <laughs> I guess, why, why did you love the book? I loved it. Well, I, it was very weird for me because uh, I, loved, I knew, I had an instinct that I would love it the moment I saw it. I was on Carla Laureano's Facebook. Mm -hmm. I'm her Facebook friend, and the night it won the contest, mm -hmm. uh, I went and looked your website up because I hadn't been there before, oh, right? and I read, I had seen something with the plot of the book, uh -huh. and I was like, I am going to love this. I just knew it was going to be special, and it more than lived up to its height. And some of the, re I love the writing style. Uh, I think the writing style is very much in the tone of 19th century romances. Thank you. It very much is. So it's not one of those books that's, you can tell is written by a contemporary writer mm -hmm. that's set a hundred and some years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I also loved it a lot because the setting was not completely in America. It goes to Britain for a while and then it goes to the Holy Land and I just thought it was really fun and exotic and you very uh, sensory. Like I could taste it and feel the heat. Oh, that's awesome. And so it's, there's a lot of adventure in it, a lot of adventure and a lot of mysteries. So if you like Wilkie Collins, the Moonstone or the Count of Monte Cristo, yes. then you're going to find something to love in this book. And I just loved Bianca. I related to her a lot. She's a very smart woman, but she's a very human woman as well. Uh, and of course I loved her relationship with Paul. She prays to go and find this man that meets her list of requirements and yes. what she finds is more than she can handle and or yes. <laughs> has bargained for. Right. So I love it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So what did you think about her list of requirements? I thought they were pretty much my list of requirements. Yeah. That's probably why I laughed. So I just, I immediately identified with her. Um, and I immediately think that a lot of readers we're living in an age where BBC miniseries are really popular. The women still love Mr. Darcy. Absolutely. And they still love the hero, the British hero, mm -hmm. and they still want that gentleman, and they still want the chivalry, mm -hmm. and Bianca wants that. She's not that different than women nowadays. Right. Uh, and she's far, far, far ahead of her time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I loved that about her. So. Right. Yeah. So, favorite scene? There are so many. I love when Bianca and Paul first encounter each other in the British Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, that scene is really gorgeous uh, because it, they're amidst all these wonderful artifacts and there's automatically, it sets up in that moment the sense, the aura of mystery that's mm -hmm. gonna follow us over to the Holy Land. Right. Um, but then there's a scene and when Bianca and Paul have the wonderful experience in the Holy Land to see some of the sites that were so prominent to the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was a religious experience and I felt that it deepened their romance and their connection because at that point it's a God-ordained right. union that they're striving for. So I loved that historical aspect. There's a day they spend mm -hmm. and at this point readers, they, they've had a bit of a tiff it's not a spoiler alert, but they've had a bit of a tiff, so they're uh, they're trying it. They're very different people, and uh, you know the hero with the mysterious past, and so they're trying to overcome that while seeing these amazing moments in Christ's life, and Bianca is confronted with all of these emblems of grace. Right. So that it's really smart. Right. Oh, thank you. The whole book is really smart. Well, I wanted it to be really smart, so... <laughs> she's really smart. I don't have to say anything about the cover date because here's Rachel McMillan. She's and really smart. I, I do a lot with personification and metaphor. 
yeah. in the book and that's mm-hmm. all purposeful too and yeah. I just because I love that and you were talking about the sensory yeah. and when I write I very much try to bring in the five senses to every scene yes and I have this this deal with myself that I can't move on until that's my favorite scene so every scene becomes my favorite scene before I can move on and then it feels yeah. like you know just one complete thing and you get to explore it a lot because this book is a transient book it has several locations uh, and one, several scenes are set when they're at sea, mm-hmm. and that ocean, the traveling landscape. And I love that in this period, Bianca, till this point, was very much an armchair traveler. Mm-hmm. She loved to read about these places, and that sense of excitement she has crossing to know that she's going to be able to experience it. I got that sense, that chill of excitement. She's just found this gorgeous guy. Mm -hmm. Um, She's met some other characters who she's not quite sure about yet. Mm -hmm. Um, And we should mention the fact that there's almost a mystery element to it that put me in mind of like an Agatha Christie uh, type where all of these different (laughs) figures are together and you don't know who to trust. You don't know who's who and you don't know what's a safe place. So with Bianca, you kind of have to navigate uh, and you paint all of them really, really well. Thank you. This this hodgepodge of people on this trip and uh, there's some poison somewhere, guys. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it defies genre. It's not historical romance alone. It's adventure and it's exotic and uh, I think it will appeal to Christian readers but I think it will appeal to fans of Deanna Rayborn um, and fans of classic fiction. Mm -hmm. So if you could live in one scene, which one would you choose without giving too much of the book away? Oh gosh, this is really good. You ask good questions. Um, (laughs) I uh, as I said, I love the the British Museum scenes because I think we get a sense of Paul's passion mm-hmm. in those scenes. Uh, but there's also a sequence um, with Paul and his brother that I really liked. Yes, and you know that I yeah. think is really at the top of my list. Yeah, and I love that because he had been through so much. Yeah, and he, in a sense, had changed so much, and there was so much longing in that scene and what he was kind of reduced to after yeah. all of the things that had transpired, but yet that love of his brother, who is not a close brother, no, but, but yet that just that grounding. common grounding. Yeah. Yes, that and propels him. There's a him. scene when they're, um, where they're get, Bianca and Paul are given um, unprecedented hospitality and a place to sleep and um, in a meal in yeah. Bethlehem, yeah. and it, as you said, you like to speak in metaphor, but also in allusion, right? Because it's very much like that. There's no room, and here they are, right. and uh, so that that was another scene that really stuck. Right. Well, I am just so pleased that you love the book, and it has been so much fun Did. meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> and I really, really, really cannot wait, readers, to read. Uh, Brandy has told me uh, that the next book is set in Scotland, and I might actually die of happiness because I'm so excited and I should also let you know that I had to ration this book I was so loving it but I didn't want it to end so I would only allow myself to read a certain amount of pages so that it even I can usually read a book like this I'll sit down and just in an afternoon I'll just Mm -hmm. be like whoa Um, but I I spread I stretched it to a week about a week and that's unheard of for me so you'll want to be careful and then you'll want to go back to the beginning and read it all over again because the mysteries will all become clear and you will be like oh my goodness (laughs) yeah well I do indeed hope that you all love the cover deep and that you allow yourself to be whisked away to the 19th century Appalachia London and the Holy Land yeah and may your hearts become all a flutter (laughs) 